Hello Cat Aspirants. So in this particular video, I'll be talking about how to crack DILR. Now I'm 100% sure that most of you would be feeling sleepless nights as far as this section goes, right? One of the most intimidating and ambiguous section that is there in CAT. Okay, so it's extremely important that we prepare for this particular section in a very structured manner. And today in this particular video, I'll try to make your life easy and try to give you some idea uh, that how to go about this section. Okay, now first of all, let us historically understand what's happening out there in this particular section. So if I just talk about uh, the CAT paper for uh, let's say 2022 and the CAT paper for 2021, we have seen that there have been 20 questions coming on this particular section and there were 40 minutes that were given to solve. Now most of you feel must feel that okay, 20 questions, 40 minutes seems easy, right? No, but it's not the case. This uh, a simple testimony to the fact is to get a 99 percentile in DILR section, how many marks you need? You all know that in the past two, three years, we have had three marks per question and a minus one or a, I would say a negative of minus one per incorrect question for MCQs and for non MCQs, obviously, we do not have any incorrect questions. So if I'm talking about 20 questions, logically, I'm looking at maximum of 60 marks. So to get a 99 percentile, which is basically a dream for most of us, how many questions we need? How many marks we need? You'll be surprised to know that if you get somewhere in the region of 26 to 30 marks, you will be able to score a 99 percentile in DILR section in CAT. And I'm talking about the historical data for the last two years. That is a very, very clear fact that most of the students are not able to solve. I would say 99% of the students are not able to solve even 50% of the questions correct. So that's what makes this section very, very tricky. Okay, so in this particular video, as I was saying earlier, I will try and give you some idea about how to go about it. So when I talk about a DILR section, suppose you are somewhere in the region of a beginner or an amateur as far as DILR section goes, then how to start it off? My suggestion to you would be for the first seven days, only focus on the basics. When I talk about basics, what do I mean? Solve basic LR sets, solve basic DI sets. Basic LR sets means uh, you can solve uh, sets based upon distribution, sets based upon arrangements, and I, I would say you can solve uh, sets based upon some logical puzzles. And in DI, take all kinds of DI caselets that are there. So it can be bar graph, it can be pie chart, it can be line graphs or, or maybe a combination of all these. So this will give you a fair understanding of what the basic of these two areas are like. Okay, but uh, obviously CAT is a different ball game, but to reach at that particular level, this is something where you need to put in. So at least uh, I would say a dedicated study of around two hours for these two sections is a must if you are not very comfortable with this section and with the time to go. So that's, that's the routine that you should be following for the first seven days. Now, when I talk about the next 15 days, what needs to be done? When I talk about the next 15 days, please try and solve caselets that have come in past years CAT. Now, when I talk about past years CAT, I would want you to try and solve caselets, let's say from 2020 to 2025. Sorry, uh, I made a mistake. I would want you to solve caselets from 2015 to let's say 2022. Okay, so as you can see, there are seven years. Seven years each year we had different number of caselets. So in all, you would be having around 60, 70 to uh, 80 caselets out there. I would want you all to try and solve that. Now, when you're solving these caselets, what is important out there is first of all, try and time yourself uh, when you when you solve this particular when you solve these particular caselets. And after you have timed yourself, after you have solved the entire paper, analyze it very, very thoroughly. Also try and solve caselets that you didn't attempt while, while taking that particular test. This will expose you to different, different variety of, of sets that have come in CAT. Also, if there are some caselets which you found extremely tough and, and even after seeing the solution, you couldn't solve it, uh, avoid those caselets. Don't uh, try and solve those caselets or don't spend too much time on those caselets. 
okay so that's that's the uh, i would say that's the next 15 days routine that you should be following i would say after 15 days till cat my suggestion to you would be uh, go for a mock test series of any uh, good coaching institute that is there in market today i would say where at least uh, uh, 30 40000 students study and try and solve 10 mock papers minimum 10 mock papers and uh, i would say 10 mock papers means at least 10 different dilr uh, sets the 10 different dilr uh, i would say sections so each section will obviously contain uh, four to five caselets. So eventually you'll again have a good pool of uh, caselets that are there. Solve each of them and repeat the process that I told you. Analyze each and every caselet after you have undertaken the test. Okay, this will give you a fair bit of understanding about what different variety is there and this will give you a lot of confidence as well. Okay, so if you have around 150 caselets under your belt and then you go and take test, things are very, very, comparatively things are better. Okay, so that's the, that's the target or that's the plan for someone who's not that comfortable. Okay, now let's come down to someone who is fairly okay. I would say in the mid sort of a level. Okay, for that particular person, my suggestion to you would be the initial part that I told about the basics and all, leave that part, you don't need rather than you should only focus on solving as many caselets as possible taking as many tests as possible okay take a lot of dilr uh, section tests solve a lot of mock papers and solve at least 15 years past cat papers if you look at all this you will at least have 200 to 250 caselets out there with you and if you solve all those 250 caselets if you analyze 90 percent of these caselets in detail i think deal is done you will be a fairly confident student when you go to when you go on a d-day and when you take an actual cat test okay so that's that's there now the other important area which a lot of students actually falter i have i have uh, i would say heard a lot of complaints about students that they have they were getting good marks i would say in the mocks but when you talk about the actual d day they faltered couple of reasons a lot of anxiety and what makes dilr difficult is because all the caselets that you will be getting will be of a fairly good difficulty level okay and students a lot of times don't understand which caselets to attempt which not to attempt so i'll try to throw some light on that aspect as well now if you talk about cat 2022 paper students cat 2022 paper uh, contained i would say fairly simple uh, stuff it contained four uh, caselets and each had five questions so if you are to get a 50 percent uh, marks you will definitely score more than 99 percentile as i have mentioned earlier so trying to find out that balance now when i'm trying to target two caselets out of four how do you judge which caselet is to be done now there is no specific way out there there is no golden rule out there which i can say that if you do this you will be able to attempt those no nothing like that it all depends upon the experience that you have had and that is the reason i'm saying exposing yourself to different caselets will make a difference Okay, now uh, in on actual D-Day, a lot of factors are there. In fact, I I, uh, I would say use some factors if I take the test also. The length of the caselet. A lot of times if the caselet is very, very lengthy, okay, I would not recommend you to start from that caselet in the first go. Because there is a possibility, a lot of length means a lot of conditions. A lot of conditions means uh, you need to apply a lot of logic and maybe it'll take a more it'll take more time as well that's a possibility and and i would say the other key things can be if suppose some qa concept is associated with with, with the caselet and uh, that qa concept you're not very comfortable at for example if you in a, in a lr or a, in, a, in an lr caselet you get a concept of uh, maximization and minimization you're not very comfortable with that it's a venn diagram sort of a caselet let's say so please don't attempt that. So you shouldn't be attempting that in the first go. There is a possibility that the caselet might be easy, but if you are not comfortable, please don't start with it because you need to understand there were only four caselets and uh, uh, we don't have too much. I would say we cannot tinker with the things too much because we only have four caselets. We don't have an option out there, right? So try and attempt caselet which you feel the language seems easy and you feel that you, you are fairly comfortable with it. You should try with that caselet. Now, the most important area where majority of the students falter when to quit or not to quit. 
Now, again, no specific answers, guys. But uh, on a fairly, uh, I would say, standard rule, I would say five to six minutes. At max seven minutes. If you can't get a case let, please leave it. You should be very, very structured out there. You should have a very clear idea in your mind that if I don't get a case let in the first six minutes, I will not attempt it right now. Maybe there is a possibility you might come back and try and re-attempt that. There is always a possibility because in in our subconscious mind, what is happening is we are always thinking about that case let. So there is a possibility that when you come back, you, you uh, some things might strike you and you are able to solve that case let. All possible suits, but be very structured on that matter. Be very specific. Five minutes, six minutes, I am done. And if you logically, if you are trying to attempt a case let, you should be in a position to solve a particular case let in in the next ten to fifteen minutes. I won't say a specific number, but ten to fifteen minutes. If you are solving a particular case let, it's a fairly good number. Okay, so that's how you should go about it. Maybe you tried it out, 10 to 15 minutes. Let's say 12, 12 to 13 minutes you took to solve one case let. You solved a couple of case lets. You took almost 25 to 30 minutes, and 10 minutes of yours have already went by in negating other case lets. So logically, if you see, you have solved around, uh, I would say, if if I say five questions per case let, you have solved around 10 questions, and if you have solved 10 questions. Fairly, it's it's there are high chances that you will crack a 99 percentile suits. Now I am assuming over here that you will get a 90 percent accuracy in DILR with bad accuracy. You cannot score good marks. Mark the mark my words. Accuracy is extremely important. You are solving seven questions. All seven or at least six should be correct because it's logic. When I say DILR, right now what is happening, students, is DI and LR are not coming separate. It's more of integrated sets. So logic is there even in DI. So if your logic is correct, there are high chances that you should get them correct. Okay. So uh, uh, an accuracy below 90% is not acceptable, and that is the uh, I would say accuracy you should be targeting from any mock that you are taking. Okay. So that should be the target. After this, I would say, uh, as I said, one more important point is: suppose you got two case lets, you you had case lets where you had five five questions. Don't try and solve all the questions, because there is always a possibility that one of the question is extremely difficult, or there have been some additional conditions out there, and which is taking a lot of time. Okay, it's preferable that you have solved the set. You solve all five questions, or let's say in 2021 you had uh, six questions for two case lets and four questions for two case lets, but again not necessary. And further on the on similar lines, if you are not able to solve a case let completely, not necessary that you won't be able to make even a single question, or you won't be able to solve even a single question for that case let. There is always a possibility that you can solve one or two questions from that case let that you are not able to solve completely. So we need to be very flexible students. Okay, so trying to solve majority of the questions from the case let that you have made, that you have that you have conquered. Okay, and if you are if you are doing that. For example, even if you are solving four four questions uh, from two case lets, eight questions means twenty four marks. You are still, I would say, in the region of ninety seven ninety eight percentile students, which is not fairly bad, which is extremely good. Okay, so the target should be very clear. We should be very flexible. We should be very very clear when to quit, when not to quit, and secondly. We should not bog down. Okay, if you if you have spent some time and you haven't been able to get those case lets, please don't be negative. It happens. You tried the first two case lets. You spent six seven minutes, six seven minutes. You see that there is a, on the time clock, fifteen minutes have gone by. You were not able to solve even a single case let. A lot of students give up the hope. They give up the hope, and thereby the entire CAT paper goes down. Please don't make it happen because, as I said in DILR, you don't need to solve too many questions to get a good percentile. Okay, the idea is there is a possibility that you may able to solve five questions, six questions, seven questions correct from there on, and you still get a good percentile, uh, 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 something in the region of 94, 95 percentile. And you do well in the other two sections, you still get an overall exceptional percentile, and you can make it to the IIMs or any of the top colleges. Okay, so don't ever let go of the hope. Keep trying. I would say fight till the last moment because that is what is required in CAT. 
Okay, so if you do that, if you follow my mantra, I'm 100% sure that you will be able to do well in CAT. Further, just one last point before uh, I would say wrapping up the video. Please, to, to improve your logic, try and solve a lot of logical puzzles. You will be getting it from n number of places. Okay, uh, my suggestion to you would be solve at least one or two Sudokus every day. Okay, varying difficulty level. Difficult, I would say intermediate, easy, varying difficulty level, but try and solve that. Okay, you can also refer, I would say, uh, puzzle books like Shakuntala Devi or I would say George Summers. Very, very recommended for any cat spirit. So if you do that, if you start improving your logic and if you focus on the type of questions that have been coming in the next, I would say 30 to 40 days, I'm sure that you will be able to do well and, and you'll crack this section. Okay, thank you so much, Switch.